Hi guys, welcome to Amateur Chemistry. I am sure that all of you know what plastic is, but did you ever wonder what it looks like on a molecular level? Well, plastic is composed of many long repeating molecule chains called polymers. If we break this name down into two pieces, we can see that a polymer is composed of lots of things called monomers. Monomers are units that can be easily linked together via the process called polymerization to create polymers which give plastic their properties. There are tons of types of monomers, most of which come from petroleum derivatives, which after polymerization can become well-known plastics, rubbers or oils. The structure and composition of plastics give them desirable properties, which is why they are used so widely in today's world. But unfortunately, most plastics have a massive downside. They are not biodegradable and can pollute the natural environment. And that is what brings me to the topic of today's video. There are some plastics which can be made very easily from plants, are very cheap and have awesome properties. The main issue with normal plastics is that animals and bacteria lack the mechanisms to metabolize them and thus they can build up in the environment and interfere with nature's processes. The bioplastic that I am going to make will have glucose as its monomer, which means that bacteria and animals will have no problem decomposing it and it will be completely safe for the environment. That also means that in theory, I could also be able to eat it, but I think that it would not be too delicious. So, to make the bioplastic, I first need a source of glucose, which doesn't need to be in its single form, but instead already in a chain. That makes it even easier for me, because lots of plants use starch which is just a pretty long chain of glucose as the reserve energy source, and extracting it is just a piece of cake. You can use cornstarch, potato starch or wheat flour, but I will go with potato starch just because potatoes are the best meme and their starch is ridiculously easy to extract. To extract the starch from potatoes, all I need to do is to just break open their cells, which will release the starch from their insides. So to do that, I first got some basement potatoes, washed them and got myself a grater. Then I grated the potatoes into a sort of pulp, which was very messy and took forever. I know that I could have used a blender, but I thought if the pulp was too fine, it might interfere with the filtration process later on. After the pulp was done, I rinsed it with some water and started filtering it using a metal sieve. I also rinsed the pulp a couple more times to extract as much of the starch as I could. After the filtration was done, I threw away the remains of the pulp and proceeded to pour the filtered water into two bowls. Then I let the filtered water sit undisturbed for a few hours, and after I came back, I saw a white layer forming on the bottom. After that, I put it into a beaker, strained it again and was left with a potato starch paste. Then, I dried it in an oven under low heat, and when it was completely dry, I had a pretty nice amount of homemade potato starch. So, here we go. As you can see, it is very easy to extract the starch from potatoes, and now that I have it, I can start making the plastic. But before that, I wanted to show you a cool experiment involving the potato starch. To make it, all you need to do is to just add water to the starch until it becomes a very thick mixture. There are no set proportions, so you have to do it until you feel that the starch and water mix is at the right consistency. Then 
This mixture is actually called ublek or a non-Neftonian fluid because when it is gently stirred it behaves normally, but when force is applied it suddenly hardens allowing you to even step on it. This is quite an unusual behavior which allows for some nice experiments. After this small distraction, I am now back to making the plastic. Apart from the starch, I am going to need some kind of acid catalyst. Almost all polymerization reactions require some sort of acid to work, and the industrial ones commonly use sulfuric acid. But this isn't a problem, because some household chemicals are also acids, such as vinegar, which is acetic acid, or citric acid from, for example, lemons. That makes it even better for me, because apart from using the potatoes, I can use some lemons, which shows that the bioplastic can be made from very easy to access materials. The final ingredient is glycerin, which you can just buy from a pharmacy. It is a very thick and sweet liquid, sometimes used as a food additive, and it will help our plastic be more malleable and prevent it from cracking. Yummy. I tried replacing it with cooking oil, but the results were pretty terrible. So now that I have everything ready, I need to measure out the ingredients. The exact measures can vary a little, but in general we are going to need around 20 grams of the starch of your choice, 15 ml of vinegar or 50 ml of lemon juice and 15 ml of glycine. The first step in making the plastic is to get a container, fill it with around 100 ml of water and start adding all of the ingredients. After that is done, the mixture has to be heated and stirred continuously to prevent large clumps of starch forming. In these hot and acidic conditions, the shorter starch chains get linked together, creating a very thick solution of polymerized starch. As of now, it is suspended in water and behaves a lot like very thick padding. After heating the mixture for a few minutes, it turned almost transparent and had a uniform texture, so I took it off the heat and poured it into a glass baking tray. I flattened it out to create a sheet and left it to dry for a couple of days. In the meantime, I made another batch, which had lemon juice instead of the vinegar. I also added some food coloring to make it look better, and since I wanted to try to eat it, I added some sugar. Unfortunately, I forgot to add the extra water, and the results turned out very hard and imperfect. While drying, it had also cracked a lot, but I managed to save a nice looking piece to test. This plastic sheet is actually pretty good at packing things, and here you can see wrapping a piece of a tortilla chip in it. But now for the most important question, how does it taste? To find out, I just took a big bite of my little package, and honestly, it was pretty good. It tasted kind of like lemonade, but in a jelly form, so apart from being a plastic, it was also a lemonade padding. Apart from the sheets, I also tried to make some bioplastic bricks. The first attempt failed miserably, but the next one was fortunately much better, and at the end I had some blue bioplastic bricks, which weren't perfect, but still fun to play with.
Also, after a few days the transparent sheet has finally solidified and it was an even better packing material than the green one. If after playing with the plastic you want to dispose of it and don't want to eat it or throw it into the trash, you can dissolve it in some water or just bury underground for the bacteria to take care of. So, I think that this is mostly it when it comes to homemade bioplastics, you can also experiment with them to create your own improved versions. If you have any questions, I will happily answer them in the comments. Also, any feedback on how to improve my content is always nice, so if you got any ideas, you can share them. This video took a great deal of time and effort to make, so if you made it that far, consider supporting my channel if you want to see more original chemical content. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.